infectious diseases ep- ep- epidemiology. That's right. uh, also attached to the, um, he's a clinical assistant professor at the Washington State University. Oh. He's here in Nairobi, right? That's right. Mm-hmm. So Dr. Wangi, I mean, what do we need to know about this particular virus? And even in relation to other coronaviruses like SARS and MERS that we've seen before, how deadly is it? Uh, thank you, Jeff and uh, Victoria. Um, so the new coronavirus that has recently emerged is very much like what we have had uh, previously in 2002, the SARS one or the mass coronavirus that happened from Canada in 2012. What we know so far is that we have had about uh, over 40 days that have, that have been witnessed and we have had more than uh, 1,320 confirmed cases so far. So um, at the moment, we know that it's a deadly disease, uh, but it's been contained. Yeah, Doctor, uh, it's Jeff. Uh, can I ask you, I mean, how, how worried should we be here in Kenya? Because there's a lot of traffic between Nairobi and Beijing or Guangzhou and those areas. How worried should we be? I mean, I, I think the first thing to say is that we haven't had any case reported in Kenya yet. And the World Health Organization has referred to countries as Kenya that are far away from Asia as to be in moderate uh, risk of, of, of getting uh, this new coronavirus. However, I think the most important thing for us is to uh, be vigilant and look out for any persons that have a history of travel to Wuhan City that uh, could possibly be having signs that are related to you know, pneumonia. Then those would be suspect cases that we should be uh, um, looking at closely. And Dr. Mwangi, even though it hasn't come onto Kenyan soil, uh, what's the estimated risk of spread um, as we speak? Uh, so now what, what we know, uh, particularly from the data that has come from China, is that if uh, a person is infected, they will infect on average two to three people. Um, of course, that means that if it came into a city as Nairobi, um, because we all have not been infected before, it would be a big risk. So the idea really is that we try and contain the disease as much as we can in the city where it has occurred. So there has been, for instance, the uh, closure of those cities to make sure that people do not travel or at least the disease does not spread easy. As to whether that this are going to be an effective way of making sure that we do not get the disease here, I think we have to wait and see. But I think that, that the world is doing as best as they can to, to make the disease uh, remain uh, in a localized state as opposed to global. And one more thing, Doctor, do we have uh, the facilities, do we have the capability to detect this thing here locally? I mean, if someone shows up at the doctor's office with a cough, for instance, I mean, you know, how, how are they going to know? So I, I think the thing to know as Kenyans is that if you have any uh, history of travel to Wuhan City, you at least been in contact with a person that has traveled from there, uh, and you get this kind of signs, you, you should report immediately to the nearest health facility. Uh, because then it's possible to get samples for, uh, for, 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 for such persons and, 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 and determine whether they have the virus or they do not have it. So I think it's important that uh, anyone with that kind of close contact or at least a history of that, they, they should uh, go into the health facility that is nearest them. All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Wangi, for your time and those insights. And we hope Kenyans are listening loud and clear. That's right. Thanks, Doctor.